Welcome. This is Ignite Kingdom Talk. Make the marketplace the miracle place. This session features Eric M. Johnson. Eric is the president and managing partner of Arnold Motor Supply and the Merrill Company, as well as the author of You Build a Business with People, the story of an entrepreneur and his American dream. Eric is also a national keynote speaker, focusing on issues surrounding technology and legislation affecting the automotive and auto care industry. He is active in both the marketplace and the church to equip others to impact the culture around them. Make sure that you visit ArnoldMotorSupply.com for auto parts for your everyday ride and those hard to find auto parts for your classic car or tractor rebuild. They'll take the extra step to help you get the right part the first time, every time. For more resources on spirit-led business leadership, like Ignite Partner Access and our free monthly Ignite Community Call, head to ignite-cb.com and sign up today. Help us leverage social media for the kingdom. Let's ignite Christian business leaders all over the world. Like, comment, share, follow, and subscribe. In the name of Jesus, may your faith and hope be ignited afresh and anew. Guys, welcome back to Ignite Kingdom Talk. We're so excited to be here with you guys. It's a it's 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 cold here in Nebraska, and I'm sure with our friend Eric Johnson, it's cold in Spencer, Iowa as well. It is probably colder. I, I think it was two when I came home for lunch. So yeah, it's uh, oh my it's gosh. downright chilly. Oh my gosh. Well. Eric, we're, uh, we're we're excited that uh, that that you're on with us today. I, and Eric's a, Eric's a great friend, guys. Uh, we usually will have a, a a business owner, an entrepreneur, and here we've got an opportunity to talk to uh, I, I think a, a fantastic leader, mm-hmm. uh, Christian business leader that's 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 out there today, and is a president. Of a, of, of a large company there in Spencer, Iowa, about a hundred, about a hundred employees, right, Eric? Well, there's a hundred here. We have about 900 total. Oh, 900. Um, wow. I, I, I guess I was off yeah. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's a hundred here in this facility, but uh, we we're from the middle of Nebraska all the way through Iowa and Illinois. We've got a just right at 900 total. Wow. You know, uh, Des and I, you know, we, we sometimes struggle to, you look festive. You look wintry. I look like I should be out in the snow in an ice castle. Oh, you look, you look warm. It, you very... should not go out in the ice castle. Just stay in where it's warm. <laughs> no, it, There's it, Hallmark it, movies that have ice castles. Oh gosh. Oh, That's I true. Think, yep. Yep. Well, it, it's it, it's like sometimes uh, you know I think we've had as as many as nine employees. I think uh, mm-hmm. it, that's that's been our that's been our peak and 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 to handle nine employees um, for us anyway uh, was I don't want to say it was frustrating, but you know y- you learn your weaknesses and and you learn your strengths pretty quick. Yeah. But Eric, it, let us tell us what what is that like running a a, a, a sizable company like what like what you're in charge of and and making sure that everything is in place making sure that the employees are doing what they're supposed to do but yet at the same time i know i know you well and and you're a you're a man of god and and want to honor him and everything that you do what what what's that like well, you know, it is certainly a uh, the the more people that you deal with the the more challenges or the more opportunities for challenges there are there's no question um you know as uh if our business were simply a matter of taking care of our customers and solving the technical challenges and those things it it would be a much simpler role but you know that's not the reality we live in at the, at the end of the day it's the people that uh that really make everything happen you know no one as a leader, I, you know, I sometimes joke with people that I do no actual work. And that is a lot of times the case, especially when you're, when you're in a company with 900 people. Um, it, one of the dangers sometimes is you can get sucked too much into the operational pieces or the, the task part of things. 
And you sometimes really have to take a uh, intentional step back and say, I, I can't get too involved in working in the business. I need to be focusing on working on the business. Right. Um, you know, the, the particular business that, uh, that I have the opportunity to lead is, uh, it really is a, is a good place to demonstrate some of these things. It's a nearly 100-year-old business. We will celebrate our uh, centennial here in three years. Um, so, you know, over that amount of time, you really do learn a lot of people-related skills, challenges, the, the culture kind of becomes ingrained. And in our case, we're very fortunate in that our founder, back in 1927, believe it or not, was very uh, a person who was very people-oriented, very focused on people. In fact, his most famous saying was, you build a business with people, not with buildings of brick and stone. And uh, I try to weave that saying into almost everything that we do. It's uh, whether it, the people that we're referencing there is our own people, our associates, our employees, our partners, however that, you know, is, or it also is the people who are, we're, we're serving and that they're our customers. And so, you know, some combination of the, the us and them, and we try to blur that line of us and them um, so that it's, you know, we're coming side by side alongside them. We want both of our businesses to be successful. Um, and so, you know, we really do lean heavily on that mantra, you build a business with people. Right, right. So what's, what's been, Eric, what's been some of your biggest challenges to try to, to try to navigate, not only in today's world, but, but it navigating to, to uh, where you don't maybe want to offend somebody or, or, or how do you, how do you make that, that, uh, you know, you don't want to, you don't necessarily want to stand up on a table and, and, and preach the gospel, but at the same time, you don't want to hide either. How do you, how do you right. personally na navigate that? Well, I do think it is a unique challenge in a larger organization, especially a larger organization where, you know, if I were the sole proprietor, if I owned the whole thing, then if I decide to burn the whole thing down, I just hurt myself. But because I also have the fiduciary responsibility to all of the owners, um, you know, there is, I have to do things that are in the best interest of everyone, not just in the best interest of me. So, you know, that does certainly create some situations where I do have to be, you know, I don't want to say that I shy away from it. I am who I am. You know, I, I think you ha you can't be fake. You can't uh, try to play both sides of the aisle. You have to, you know, take a stand for what's true and what's right. right. But at the same token, you do have to be totally respectful of everybody else's perception, and you can't do anything that's going to be detrimental to the the financial um, wherewithal of the company at large because of all the other owners who may not agree with the way I, I go about things. Um, and, and maybe they don't agree or, or share the same worldview I do. So you do have to um, be wise about, but at the end of the day, you know, I don't find that it's too big of a challenge because if you already have your moral compass aligned and you have it based on something that is absolute, which as Christians, we're honestly the only people who can do that. Um, you know, most of your big questions or your big decisions are already answered for you in advance. You already know what's right. You already know the basics of, of, of you know, what you need to do. And honestly, most people, whether they on a big picture worldview agree with you or not, the proof is in the pudding of the decisions that you make are right. And they, when you make the right decisions based on actual truth, the end result is better. So, you know, I, I think you do have to be wise and you can't just, you know, beat people over the head with with your opinions. But at the same token, it, it would be a mistake to shy away from truth based decisions that, you know, are based on the truth that we glean by understanding the truth as as it's revealed to us through God's word. Amen. Amen. You know, I've always appreciated Eric, about you is, you know, in, in, in our talks and even some of the 
situations, um, you know, that you'll, that you'll be in and, 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 you know, asking for, asking for prayer, asking for wisdom, you, you care about your employees. And that's, to me, that shows uh, every, every time I'm talking to you, uh, because a situation to where, you know, uh, you know, you, you don't share any of the details, but I know it's, it, it's something that's weighing on you and a, a situation that you need to address. And I've always appreciated about that, uh, about you, because you care and you care about uh, what happens to the employees? That's a that's a, that's a big responsibility. A, a thousand people, and I mean, it's you're like the. I mean, you could almost look at it like you're. That's your ministry. Well, I think there is a, a definite um, similarity or a parallel. You could call it a, uh, a a pastorate in some regards. I mean, you, you know, if you. Look at the root of the word pastor. You're talking shepherd, the person who is providing like guidance and, and leadership for the sheep. Um, and president of a company is essentially the same thing. Um, I, I do believe that I have responsibility to God for the safekeeping of these people and the decisions that I make are you know, impacting their families, impacting the quality of their lives. And so I think that's something that you have to take very seriously. I know my my predecessor in, uh, you know, as we were talking through, you know, what the role was and, and how he saw things, you know, he talked a lot about the, you know, when you go home at night, you have to be able to, to lay your head down on the pillow knowing that you did right by all of these people. And so, you know, you can't make decisions based on what's best for Eric Johnson. You have to make decisions based on what's best for the other 899. And, uh, um, you know, that's just the way you have to do it. But um, it, it is also, you know, there's, yeah, there's weight that goes with that, but it's also a, a great joy to, uh, you know, in some ways it's almost like being the dad of the company too. In the sense that, yeah, I'm ultimately responsible, but there's a it's it's really cool to see the victories that uh, you know, hey, person X has has really gotten great at this skill, and look how much they've come over the last two years, and mm-hmm. and there that's that's fun too. So you know, it's not like it's just a, woe is me. It's a it's a heavy burden to to be in this role. There's a lot of uh, opportunity for uh, for joy and, and to really. Um, share in the excitement of the people just in the same way kind of you do with your own kids when they learn to ride their bike or master a new skill. So there, there's a lot of both sides of that coin. So when you're talking, I always am asking the Lord, you know, what scripture, what would you have me, you know, share? And <clears throat> the scripture that comes to mind is uh, where what you build on, if you build on the sand or if you build on the rock, And when we build on the rock, you know, when the winds come and the rain or winds blow and the rain comes, that what you've built is going to last and it's going to stay strong and secure because of your foundation. And so and that doesn't just mean in your home with your family, you know, at your church, it is in every Mm -hmm. area of your life. And so what you're doing there is the same thing. And and it it's interesting because the scripture also that unless God builds a house, we labor in vain. And you could strive and strive and strive to be the most incredible boss, you know, leader. But when Christ in you, the hope of glory is at work and moving on your behalf in and through you. And so when, you know, decisions need to be made, well, you've got the spirit of knowledge. You got the spirit of wisdom and understanding and discernment working on your behalf. And so, you know, the Lord says, you have not because you ask not. And when you go to the Father and say, you know what, I got this deal, what going on with, you know, whomever, whatever, you know, Lord, how how should I handle this? That you know what you hear is going to be the best, yeah. <laughs> you know, way to do it yeah. and way to handle right. it. And I believe that even in John 15, where, you know, about Craig and I were just talking about this and reading this yesterday, when we are connected to the vine 
and we are engrafted into mm. the vine and you know the lord prunes off everything in us that is of no value and doesn't produce fruit and he just cuts it away you know the pruning is good but when the fruit that comes from the choices we make from obedience from loving god that everyone around you every employee that comes to you is going to be able to partake of the fruit because of who you're engrafted into wow yeah we just talked yeah. about that this morning didn't no, we, that, Eric? And, yeah that uh that passage of scripture really is it, it rings true with me as well and it, it's interesting too because we did talk about very similar things this morning and uh you know in that listen. passage where you're talking about the flood the water you know the the water is the destructive thing but yet we also were talking this morning about psalm one and uh and in fact i have it right here i'm going to read psalm one because that i think fits nicely psalm one verses one through three said how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the path of the sinners nor sit in the seat of the scoffers but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He, that person that we just described, will be like a tree firmly planted by the streams of water, which yield its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers. Um, I lean on that a lot, because, you know, you look at the, the water of the flood that we were just talking about that, that could come in and, and destroy the house, there's also the water that nourishes and the tree that's rooted or the house that's built on that solid rock. And, and you know, it's the same rock in both cases. It's, it's Jesus. It's the word of God. Um, I also think it's interesting in Psalm 1 where, you know, it's talking about that you meditate day and night um, on it. But, you know, the implication there is you're doing something with that. It's not enough just to think about it. It has to affect the way you operate. Um, and I, I love the idea too, of that you're yielding fruit in season. It doesn't mean that maybe the fruit isn't right now. You know, sometimes we, especially the kind of people who tend to end up as a president of a company tend to be rather driven and need to see results. Um, sometimes we have to remember that there's a season and, and I have to bear fruit when, when the time is and, and I have to stay rooted, stay grounded stay planted in his word and uh, the fruit's going to come. Amen. Amen. Well, when you just, when you're talking about, you know, meditate, meditate on his word day and night. <clears throat> and that's one of my things. I rarely do I go to sleep without, you know, reading the word and just, it's like, Lord, I want your word in me. The last thing before I go to sleep that the spirit of the Lord would be, you know, talking to me as I go to sleep. And then the same thing in the morning when you get up, it's like, Lord, let me be in your in your word. And the scripture that really just comes to mind too is that as we meditate on his word day and night, that obviously you're going to have good success in what you're doing because you're hearing from the Lord. And that's also in the Bible too. But also it says, let the words in my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing mm. to you. And it's like, how can the words of our mouth be pleasing and the meditation of our heart be pleasing to the Lord if it's not full of the words of the Lord? And, you know, m one of my favorites is, you know, where Jesus was tempted. It sounds like a crazy part to be one of your favorites. But it was how he responded and how he handled it. And he just said, it is written, it is written, it is written. And the third time when he says it, he's like, away from me, Satan, it is written. You know, and I, I love that. But if we don't know what is written, how can we stand against the enemy? And, you know, just the, to encourage people to be in the word, meditate on the word, memorize the word, hide it in your heart that you won't sin against, you know, the Lord. And when you need an answer and the Holy Spirit just, you know, says, oh, yeah, okay, I remember that scripture. And, you know, oftentimes he speaks well, a lot to me through his word and he confirms it with his word so yeah amen amen um eric what what uh i know you well and you and i have uh, known each other for a handful of years and we meet once a week what what tell us about eric johnson who is eric johnson 
Okay. Well, you know, I, I grew up, uh, I'm a farm kid from Iowa, so pretty easy to uh, define. Um, really good um, beginning to life. It's, there's no better way to grow up as a boy than on an Iowa farm. I mean, that's just, mm -hmm. you, you learn all kinds of good things. Um, learned how to work, for one thing. Um, so, you know, lived in a small town, graduated with uh, a class of 166, I think. So, you know, nothing massive, um, pretty involved in, uh, in, in sports growing up and, and learned some good lessons from that as well. Um, went to college. That's where I met Gene. Um, and, uh, so we got married just between our senior year of college and, uh, lived in Omaha for a while. So we actually, we, uh, went to the same church, I think, you know, back in the nineties and didn't necessarily know each other that well then, but, uh, we're, we're there. Um, and uh, so we have two raised boys now at this point. Uh, both are married. Um, our oldest has had a daughter, so we have a nine-month-old uh, granddaughter. So that's, uh, that's new for us to have the, the granddaughter. So we just got to experience that first Christmas with her at our house, and that, that's, that's been awesome. fun. Um, so, yeah, you know, that uh, family is obviously an important thing. And, uh, you know, when I went to, to college, I, I, and I do think, you know, I talk a lot about um, reading God's word and all that, but I also did a lot of things in a practical sense to prepare for, you know, leadership. So, you know, I had a, a, an economics and a finance degree. Um, my undergrad is in that. And then I went back to school and got a master's degree later. Um, so, you know, I think it's a good to mix those things together to, to do the the thing, you know, for the role that I was working for, that was really important. And in, in other cases, it's not, but there's something that's important for everybody, you know, for the, 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 the area that they're aiming for, there's a lot of practical skill acquisition that you've got to do, mm -hmm. but you can't just do that. You know, you, you've also got to deal with the, the, the spiritual truth aspect of it as well. So, you know, I, I think for decades I've tried to mix those two together to to be well rounded in terms of experience, education, but also you know to to stay rooted, stay grounded, meditate in His law day and night, because um, that's really where the truth comes from. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, it, okay, so then then how, Eric? It, it, one of the things I've always appreciated about you is. You know, you'll have the you'll have the governor at I, I think it was at your place of of business I, I believe um, and and different. Uh, you, you're always involved. You're always getting involved in trying to you're trying to create a, a better community. Um, you know, to me, it's mm -hmm. it's uh, it, it's to me it's it's more of what the believer you're an example of what the believer really should be especially the the, the leaders the business leaders out there you don't just sit in an office and, and and build this big empire i mean you're out there i don't know how many times i i've, I've known you to go to washington dc and 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 fight for um a, a, a better life in, in in spencer iowa what caused what caused right. that uh to, what caused you to go to that direction well, you know, for me, it's a very practical thing. Um, I have, I can't stand politics. The whole politicians drive me nuts. I don't like the whole process, but it's necessary. It, yeah. You know, it, it is in order to, in a, you know, I, by just the, the role that I'm in, I have to be somewhat of a leader within my industry as well, not just my company. Um, and so there are issues that face our industry that are real, that are tangible, that are very black and white and have um, significant impact on our ability to take care of our customers and our ability of our customers to, to get what they need done, done. Um, and so, you know, I do, we've had uh, both of the, uh, the Iowa senators, Senator Grassley and Senator Ernst, have been in our offices for tours and meetings. We've had representatives in. We've done um, meetings in Washington, D.C., more times than I can count. We've been in Des Moines. Um, so, yeah, I think it's very important. And uh, so we work closely with our industry association to help make connections. But I also think, you know, it is important for 
a business leader to have connections with, you know, maybe not the, the senator or the representative, but at least people in their offices that you can call them and there is a relationship there already so that when there is something that comes up that you need, that you can say, hey, this is Eric, and they know who they're talking to. And uh, you can relay your concerns to them on a real level. Because like it or not, you know, government has an impact in business. And, uh, you know, it's our responsibility as leaders to shape that the best we can. Um, Because most, for the most part, they do want to make good decisions. And they don't know what they don't know. And so it's up to us to help educate them and and, uh, you know, they can't be experts in everything. That's good. Then, Eric, how, how, do we, how, do we, how do we teach the other business owners, the other Christian business owners or business leaders that are out there? How, how, do, we, how do we get them to understand that? Well, I think, you know, part of it is there is this, oh, I wouldn't maybe say fear, but there is just this uncomfortableness of, I don't know where to start. I'm not the expert. Um, and I think we need to, you know, set that aside. You know, the first time that I went to D.C., um, so I've been out there on lobbying trips. Oh, I, I, I would get I do, couldn't even tell you. But the first time that I went, um, I had no idea. You know, I, I'd never been there or I'd never been there in that capacity. I'd been there as a tourist. Um and so you, you do have to learn a little bit of how does the mechanics work? How do I, who do I need to talk to? Where, you know, and, and there's a lot of that that you can um, work. There's a lot of industry associations. Most industries have some association that can help navigate some of those things. But from my perspective, the best thing that we did was find the local office of the representative or senator or whoever it is and call them and say, hey, we'd like to introduce you to our business. We'd like to meet you. We'd like to take you to lunch. We'd like to, you know, they like to, I don't want to say like it's fake, but they like to be seen in the public. And it's not in the, in all the cases I've seen, it's not just a, I'm here for a photo op. They really do want to learn. Um, so to me, that's the best place to start is start at the local level, find the local rep, find the guy who's manning the office closest to your community, start there and establish that relationship and then start learning, okay, how could we host the congressperson? How could we go visit? You know, and we've done things where I will encourage all of our people to email, you know, send, here's, I'll, I'll, I'll hit all 900 of our people and say, I want you to send this message to your local representative. And there are some good tools out there that let you find, you know, we're spread out across five states. There's all, I wouldn't even begin to be able to tell people who their local representatives are, but there are plenty of good places online where you can just steer them and say, go to this website, go to this page, put in your address here. It's going to tell you who to contact and then reach out to them. And and so it's been, as we've gotten into it, it's become relatively easy with not too many big resources to be able to mobilize people. And, uh, you know, I don't know what percentage when I say, hey, 900 people, please reach out. I, I would be crazy if I think that even half of them actually do it. But, you know, any voice that reaches through, a lot of people sit at home and complain but never actually take the time to do something about it. So I think the voices that do at least reach out are significant. I mean, we're seeing things move and change because of the sustained effort that it's taken years, but you just keep hammering at it and, and you do get through. That's good. Well, Eric, this is, this has been, this has been really good. And and you've, you've brought up some great points and, and I just think we've believers um, we've got to do more. It's, it's up to us. And, and, uh, it, it, we've got to do a better job. And especially as leaders, leaders in our community, we, we've got to do something. Um, we've got to do a better job. We can't go another year and, and look back and, and not have done more than what we did the year before. I, I, I think there's, uh, right. I think there's a sense of urgency 
or, or we need to create this sense of urgency uh, to, 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 because we, we've just we've got to do a better job. And, and I think it's up to us. I think it's up to we, the people, uh, need to do that, especially as we uh, the, Christians. the Christian believers, the Christian leaders. And, and to me, you've set an example. And I've always, I've always uh, you know, something about Eric you may not know, Des, is, is in our group. In our group, it's like every time we'll have some kind of a deep conversation. And, and it's not that maybe we're looking for a solution or, you know, it, it, we're kind of going around. And Mr. Eric doesn't say anything until the very end, holds the answer, holds the key to whatever we're talking about. And it's like, oh, my gosh, where, where has that been? And I've always, always loved that about you, Eric. And, and uh, I know it's, it's like, it's like you think you're, you're always a listener. You're a good listener. And uh, you, be, when you speak, you, I, I know that you've always have done your job of, of listening well uh, before you speak. And we need more people. We need more Eric Johnsons out there, I believe. No, well, thanks. I, you know, I do think that's a mark of leadership is to be able to sit quiet and, yeah. and take in information and absorb it and, and process it and then come out with a, a well-informed, hey, here's what I think after mulling it over for a while. I, that's yeah. probably an important thing. But okay. sometimes I just uh, get mad and spout off without two seconds of thought, too. So it's not, uh, <laughs> it's not like I've got that down. Yeah. So yeah. quick to listen, slow to speak, and mm. slow to become angry. Yes, yeah, it's you like, would think that was in scripture, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Eric, this has been really good. One, one, one other question before before we get if if you had to do things over, Eric, what would you what would you do different? Yeah, so you know, I think well, again, using the analogy of the company that I work for, um, I, I wish that I'd have found this company sooner, but I didn't, so I I can't change that. But I do think that, um, well, I wrote a book about the company. Um, and during, which by the way, it's called You Build a Business with People. So if you're curious about it, you can find it on Amazon. Um, but at, during the process of that, I kind of recognized that Mr. Arnold, the guy who started our business, um, had a couple of things that are pretty common and he was really people driven. And that was the thing that was over anything else was that his focus was on people. And I wish that I could go back in time and start to become more people focused instead of skill focused or knowledge focused. And I'm not, you know, the, the skill and the knowledge again are essential to what I do, but I wish that I had gotten that people lesson sooner even simple things like recognizing people by name. You know, I have 900 employees. It's very difficult to keep track of who's who and try to, but I put a lot of effort into things like that. And 20 years ago, I would not have. I didn't put the importance on people. Um, so to me, that's, if I could go back and, and start over and, and, you know, travel back in time to 21-year-old uh, Eric, I would... I would not listen to myself because I was too stubborn when I was 21, but I would still try to convince myself to, you know, be more people centric and hone those skills yeah. before, or at least in concurrent with all of the other stuff that at that time I was so busy focusing on my economics and my finance and my what this and that. Um, Cause at the end of the day, that's why I'm, the president of the company today is because of people skills, not because I'm uh, some sort of magician with finances or economics. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Eric, you're a, you're a, you're a good man. And, and, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm blessed to, to call you friend and, and, and guys, I, I, I want to say, well, I, I, I appreciate it. And, and guys, listen, if, if, if you're out there and you're listening to this, to this podcast, I, I get the privilege of, of hanging out with Eric every single week on a, on a, on a Zoom group call. And um, I get the privilege of hanging out with his wife on a Zoom call every week. You do. <laughs> yes, you do. do. Which so, is so honestly the bigger privilege, I will admit, <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
Oh, but we 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 do. We 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 cherish the, these the, these calls. Uh, and if you go to ignite-cb.com, it's 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 under strategic uh, uh, strategic uh, group, um, and 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 you can see the the the, uh, the partnership. And w- when you when you sign up for that, guys, you get to hang out with people like Eric Johnson, people that that. Uh, uh, that care, people that will help you, people that will help you, encourage you to take those next steps and, and to, to help you to be accountable. Mm-hmm. And I, I just think that it's, it's lacking in our world today. And guys, we've had such a, such a privilege of, of talking with Eric Johnson. And um, Eric, you, you, again, you're, you're, a, you're a great friend and we appreciate everything you're doing. And not only doing there at, uh, you know, with, with what you do, and but to me, it, the community, the bigger picture is you're making a difference and you're showing others how to make a difference. And to me, that's what counts. And we just we need more people uh, like, like yourself to be able to do that. Des, can you just can you can you just sure. pray over Eric and everything that he's doing? Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are great and greatly to be praised, Lord. And, Lord, we thank you for Eric. We thank you for Jean, his family, Lord. We thank you for the position you placed him in. And, Lord, that you have given him leadership skills. And, Lord, that they're given to him, but, Lord, that he actually listens Mm. and takes them and puts them to work. And, Lord, we thank you for what you're building in and through him at that corporation. We thank you that the compassion of Christ is evident in him that the wisdom and the knowledge is evident in him when he speaks, Lord, that he knows the words of the Lord. And, God, that you give him your reasoning. And we just thank you, Lord, that even when when situations rise up, Lord, God, you've already made a plan. You've made a way. Your ways and your thoughts become his ways and his thoughts. So, Lord, we thank you for what he's doing now, what's yet to come. And, Lord, we we just bless this man of God. And, Lord, we say prosper that he would prosper even greater and be in in perfect health Mm. as his soul prospers in jesus wonderful name and we speak multiple blessings upon this business upon the owners lord upon their families lord upon every employee god we just plead the blood of jesus over them we speak your grace over them and we thank you for this company lord and that that eric gets to be a part of it in a big way in your name amen this was good wasn't it it was You've taught us a lot, Amen. Eric. We, we appreciate it. Well, and, thank you. Thank you for that prayer, too. And, and thank you for everything you guys are doing. It's uh, much appreciated. Well, amen. Amen. And guys, we really believe, even in the days that we're living, the best days are yet to come. Amen. So go out and do something great for the kingdom. God bless. We truly hope you've enjoyed this episode. Remember, trust Jesus. Be who he's called you to be. We would be honored to have you with us for the next Ignite Community Call. These community sessions are entirely free, but registration is required due to limited seating. So register today at ignite-cv.com. To dive in deeper, join us in Ignite Partner Access. Thank you for listening to Ignite Kingdom Talk. Ignite Christian Business, and by extension, Ignite Kingdom Talk, is for you, the spirit-filled servant leader called to be salt and light to the marketplace. By developing a library of free resources, supporting intentional community, and fostering strategic development and growth among like-minded peers, Ignite is here to empower business leaders to walk out their calling so that in their success, the marketplace becomes the miracle place. With a yes from you and Holy Spirit, we would love to have you join us in the Ignite Partner Access Program. Ignite Partner Access is a paid access strategic development group whose weekly small group video calls are built to hone gifts and visions. Iron sharpening iron against the backdrop of Ignite's own servant leaders' knowledge and experience to add value, never merely tickle ears. Whether your business is just beginning or your years in, we would be honored to come alongside you in your walk with God. Learn more and sign up today at ignite-cb.com. Thanks for being with us today. And remember, the best is yet to come.